animatedanatomy.com. Hello everyone, I haven't made a new video in a long time. I kind of didn't have motivation to do so and I lost the inspiration but here I am back again and we're going to be uploading a new video almost every week or every month. Um, the circulatory system is also called the cardiovascular system. It tr permits blood transport, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones and blood cells to and from the cells in the body and it helps to fight the diseases, it stabilizes the blood temperature, stabilizes the pH values and also maintains the homeostasis. Now I will explain the, 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 the main parts of the cardiovascular system. If we remove the bones and we keep the blood vessels and heart we will <clears throat> see that the heart is located inside of thorax on the left side. You can see that out of the heart you have uh, arteries and veins coming out and going in. You can also see the small arteries on the heart. Those are the arteries that supply the muscle tissue of the heart. There is something specific about these arteries and that is that they supply with blood during the diastolic pressure uh, because during the contraction of the heart muscle that's when we have the systolic peak right but at that time it is impossible for blood to supply the heart muscle with uh, oxygen because the muscle is contracted so only when muscle relaxes that's when the blood can go through however uh, normally we have the pulse in the rest of the body and supplying the blood through the contraction of the heart with the systolic pressure increasing and then falling to the diastolic pressure. As we go further from the heart towards the, the, the big artery and the smaller arteries and then further to the peripheral part of the body like here for example or anywhere else where it turns into capillaries, the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure gets lower and lower until you reach the veins, the blue vessels here, the blue blood vessels, the pressure is pretty much constant. The pressure in veins can depend upon the body posture and the body position. If you're in an upright position, then the pressure normally drops in your head and increases in your legs. In older patients, this can lead to edema. Also, in older patients, you will notice the uh, increased uh, uh, promination of the veins and that's usually because the walls in the veins are not functioning very good and therefore the blood cannot be uh, transported back to the heart properly. Now of course there are structural differences between uh, arteries and veins which I will not explain into detail because this is not the histology lesson. However I will say that on the arteries we have a really big smooth muscle uh, layer and below that there is a basal membrane and internal elastic lamina and then comes the endothelial cells. Outside of that we have the uh, outside of the smooth muscle we have a layer of external elastic lamina that's the layer here and then we of course have the adventitia, that's the red part. However, on the veins we have a way smaller smooth muscle here, but the adventitia is bigger. This is the reason why, for example, bacteria in veins does not only expand through the bloodstream, but they can also expand through the adventitia and go in the opposite direction of the bloodstream. That's really interesting and there are many cases where this happens. Then we have the uh, basal membrane right after the uh, right after the smooth muscle deeper and then we have the endothelium cells. Inside of the vein you can see maybe here or maybe not because it's small you see the valves. They are 
made for that to keep the blood from going back and to keep the blood going into that direction. Now we will go back to the anatomical focus of this lesson. And I have to tell you that there is also a lymphatic system, which is also a part of the circulatory system. However, this system is not closed. That means that the fluid does leave the circulatory systems, enters the body, etc., etc. However, when we talk about the cardiovascular system, then it is closed, meaning that the blood never leaves the network of blood vessels. In contrast, oxygen and nutrients diffuse across the blood vessels layers, and they carry uh, in. They enter the interstitial fluid, which carries oxygen and nutrients to the target cells. And carbon dioxide and waste from the cells in the opposite direction. This is very important to know. So cardiovascular system is closed, while the lymphatic system, the system we have here, it is not closed. Now, now to talk about the parts of the circulatory system, we have the heart here, and then, as I already mentioned, we have the coronary circulation. That includes the coronary arteries and coronary veins, which supply and take away the blood from the heart. We also have the uh, respiratory or the uh, pulmonary circulation, and that includes the arteries and veins that actually supply the lungs with uh, blood and take away the blood from the lungs. And something interesting for the pulmonary circulation is that the it is the arteries here that are illustrated blue and they're illustrated blue because they carry the uh, blood that is saturated with CO2 and is running low in oxygen. Uh, and the veins that are taking away the blood from the lungs are actually saturated with the O2. Uh, this is actually because you have it here. Uh, you see the vein coming from. The, this is the biggest vein coming from the uh, from the body here and down there, and it's carrying the blood that is low in oxygen. It enters the right uh, first enters the right auricle and then right ventricle. From there, it goes further to enter the pulmonary trunk and then it separates and goes to the lungs. And there you go, and that's why it's opposite here. You have the artery that's carrying actually the uh, blood low on oxygen. However, when this blood comes back to the heart, it, comes, uh, it goes here to left auricle, and then it goes to the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it gets pumped out behind here, and it goes into aortic arch, and from here it already uh, is in the <clears throat> systemic circulation, and that is the last component of the circulatory system that I will mention here. The systemic circulation is supplying the entire body with blood. It's supplying the body with oxygen-rich blood and taking away the CO2-saturated blood from the body. Now, worth of mentioning are maybe the most important arteries here that we have, and that the artery here that I'm just that I have just selected is the descending th uh, thoracic aorta, and here was the aortic arch, right? Uh, further down there, we have the descending aorta, and here it splits up. This is the base of the aorta, and it splits up in the left external iliac artery and the right external iliac artery. Further down there you have the <clears throat> right femoral artery and the left femoral artery. At certain point you have here the right internal iliac artery. Remember this was the right external iliac artery and this of course is the internal because it goes internally and uh, here it releases the potomdal artery that goes to penis and here we have the gluteal artery that goes to the gluteus muscles, uh, the minimus, maximus and the medius. Now if we go up 
there we will see here we have the left common carotid artery and here is the right common carotid artery this is the left vertebral artery and here is the right vertebral artery uh, the carotid artery are particularly um, important here and if you watch my lessons about the uh, about the human brain about the neuroanatomy in my software uh, you will learn about the blood supply in the in the brain and that's why this is important to know that how the carotid artery comes here and at a certain point you have it splits into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery is very important for the uh, blood supply of the brain uh, you have to learn that um, down there if we scroll down a little bit I've skipped something really important that is to mention the renal arteries and a lot of blood is going through your kidneys uh, it's basically being um, filtered uh, in the kidneys and this is the right and this is the left renal artery and of course you have immediately the left renal vein and the right renal vein and up there we had the superior cava vein that uh, gathers the blood from that collects the blood from the brachioencephalic vein, uh, the left one and the right one. And why is it called the brachioencephalic? Well, it's coming from the hand, from the from the arm, and it's also uh, collecting the blood from the brain. Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description, or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.